Hi guys, so tonight we're going to be putting together my August budget together. So I have my um, planner and then I've also kind of just started the template for my paper budget. I just write out all the categories but we fill in the numbers together. Um, before I get started, a couple things I want to say. If you're not familiar with how I budget, um, welcome. I do have a finance kind of playlist that I will link down below if you're interested in seeing other things. Uh, that I've done and shared with my personal finances. The other thing I wanted to mention is I am paid monthly. So for my salaried position, I get paid one time a month and that is given to me on the last business day of the month and it lasts me the entire month. So for me, it does look a little bit different, um, but I think the same kind of principles and um, zero-based budgeting skills that I've learned apply. So those are just a couple things I wanted to mention right off the bat to kind of explain why I do the things I do. So. Right I have off the bat here is my calendar. This is in my planner. I was waiting for my last bill email to come through, um, which is right here. So I'm just gonna highlight this in purple because that's how I can differentiate which ones are my bills. So in here, um, you'll see anything kind of in this purpley highlighter color. Um, so anything over here and here, those are all bills or payments I'm making. Anything in green is going to be um, some sort of payment. So here's when I have my payday. Um, I do use cash back for my credit card and I cash in once a month. And then I also have interest that I earn for my sinking fund accounts that I do include because it's income, it's money that I'm getting. Another thing you'll see on here are a couple of pink boxes. So I have one here and maybe you can see that I've got one down here too. And those indicate like a special event. So for me, these are both birthdays. Um, I've got my mom's birthday and then my boyfriend's birthday both here. So I like to highlight those in pink, kind of draw a little bit more attention because typically there's some more spending that's involved with those days. So those are what um, those mean. And then the last color you're probably seeing on here are these orange allowances. So again, if you've not seen me budget before, every single Friday I give myself an allowance of my spending money. So I have a key over here. For me, that means grocery, gas, and spending, which I should probably highlight this in orange. So like I said at the beginning, I'm paid once a month, so my money has to last me the entire month. And I can kind of blow it at the beginning of the month if I'm not careful. So what I do is instead is every Friday I give myself $100 for groceries, um, $10 for gas, and $65 for kind of any other spending. And all I have to do is get it from last from this Friday to the next Friday. So sometimes I have left over, sometimes I use it all in the week, but that's how I manage it so that I stay on budget, but I'm also um, having that money, you know, actually work its way through the month instead of spending it all up front and then having two weeks at the end of the month where I'm like really scraping by. So I hope that made sense to you guys. Not really anything else exciting on here. Um, I do have a new amount to share. Um, I changed my phone plan. It just wasn't working for me. I was on a family plan but had to switch so that is a new balance and I'm not exactly sure if it actually will come out on the 5th. I signed up for it to come out on the 5th but the first month can be weird sometimes. So We'll see how that works out. Um, and that is it. So let's go ahead and jump into the budget. So here is my August budget. As I've said before, I budget off of what I know I'm going to get. So for me, a guaranteed paycheck right now is my salaried paycheck that I'm paid once a month. And so that is what I budget off of. It's $3,570.49 for the entire month for me after taxes and all that fun stuff. So with that, I'm a zero-based budgeter and I like to make sure every cent of this goes to one of these categories. And really what being a zero-based budgeter means is that you're assigning money to every category. Now that doesn't mean that you're actually spending it, it could be saving, it could be investing, it could be paying off debt, it could be anything, but just making sure you have a plan for every bit of it so that you're not um, stuck with a bit that you could be you know, using to help improve your financial future, you're spending it instead. So. That is kind of what I do. So let's just go ahead and start. Um, the first section I do here is my expenses. So these are kind of like my fixed expenses, I guess. Um, so the first one is my mortgage. I pay $1,074.55. Now this is something I talk about in a decent amount of great deal in my wrap up videos, which I do 
um, after the month is over to talk about how I either stuck to my budget or how it differentiated, things like that. I am paying extra on my mortgage right now um, because I want it to snowball in time and really help me save interest. So that is what I'm currently paying. That equates to two extra payments a year on my mortgage, which I'm pretty pleased with. The next one here is an HOA. I do belong to an association, so $224.51. Um, for me, this is a pretty sweet deal. It includes lawn care. I live in Minnesota, so snow removal, which is huge. Um, it also includes my internet and cable. Um, my association went together and bundled all of us and all of our units together. So it's a you know it seems a little high, but I'm getting a lot of value out of it, and I don't mind paying. The next one is insurance, and my insurance, I just got another discount from my um, insurance coming from my car insurance, so now my total is $172.90, and this is for my car insurance, my homeowner's insurance, and my umbrella policy that I hold. Um, so all that together right there um, on my actual calendar, we saw it broken out, but for the sake of space on my sheet, I just lump it together. Next, we have phone. Like I said, I switched plans, um, so that's $94.90. I did start with the highest plan and figured I can track the usage and see how it goes and always downgrade, um, but right now that's what I'm choosing to go with. Netflix and Spotify are roll up together, and that is $24.71. That is... Um, both of these actually hit one of my oldest credit cards, which is my Discover card. I got it when I was like... I don't know, 18. Um, and so I have both of those hit there every single month and I just pay them off to help keep that um, credit history alive there. So for groceries, gas and spending are the next categories. We already looked at this. There's four Fridays, that's my payday for these, four Fridays in the month of August. So I'm gonna take each of my weekly allowances and multiply them by four. So for groceries, I get $100 a week. So that means I'm gonna get $400. Gas, I'm giving myself $10 a week because I'm just not going many places or really needing a lot of gas, so that's gonna be $40 for the month. And then spending, I get $65 per week, which is gonna give me $260 for the entire month. So, all of this added up together equals $2,291.57, which gives me a remaining of $1,000. $278.92. So before we move down, I'm just going to highlight a few things here. Um, let me get my highlighting pack out. So this is how much money I had. I like to make income and money that I've left to distribute green. Here are my expenses and my total. And then I still have this much to distribute. So there we go. The next section here are my funds. Now I am not a cash envelope person. I actually just did a video. I will link for you guys about how I manage my money being completely cashless. So my funds could be the equivalent to like sinking funds and cash envelopes. They're kind of both. I just lump them under the term funds. So the first one is my utilities. I have a utility fund, I keep it at $300 at the beginning of every month, and then I let my utilities just you know, hit my bank account and come out of there and then I replenish it. So this month, in order to start the month at $300, I need to add in $78.53. So not bad at all. The next one is annual. This is a fund that I put money in every single month in order to pay for annual dues. So I actually just bought my car registration tabs and it came out of my annual fund. My taxes come out of my annual fund. Um, any annual credit card fees come out of the annual fund, things like that. So I always put $110 in here. It goes into high um, high yield savings account or high interest account and then I get to make even more money off of it which is pretty nice. Next one is Miko, that is my cat. He gets $40 every month. That covers food, litter, toys, catnip, um, whatever I don't spend in the month I roll over and eventually that will pay for his annual vet visit as well. 
Incidental, I typically do $50, but I'm gonna do $100. I had um, a little bit more expenses come out of this fund this past month, so I need to replenish and pay myself back. Um, but I'm gonna talk about those details a little bit more in my recap video. But Incidental for me is kind of like the cushion fund or unbudgeted, it's kind of the something Something will always come up in your monthly budget, I found, and it's nice to just have a little spot here. So normally for me it's $50, but like I said, um, I needed to raise that a little bit to make sure I'm um, evening out. Vacation fund, $300. So vacations are a little bit different now because of COVID, um, but I'm still uh, contributing to this, and I still do use a little bit. Sometimes it's just a fancy date night or something like that that we're having, um, but I'm still contributing there. Next is beauty, and I'm gonna put $50 into my beauty fund. Um, so that's kind of any sort of, you know, beauty related items I wanna buy. Gifts is gonna get $100. So like we saw, I have double birthdays coming up, and I had, you know, um, another birthday in June, and Father's Day, and Mother's Day. I just feel like I get hit hard in the summer for gifts. So I am raising that to $100. Normally it's about 50. Home, um, $30, so this is for, you know, batteries, light bulbs, kind of whatever home things I would need. Um, and then the last one is my emergency fund, and I do have one month of expenses saved up in my emergency fund, which is kind of the minimum I want it to be at, um, but I'm still contributing about 50 bucks every month just to help kind of keep it growing, um, and then if I have anything come up, I have a little bit of a cushion there. So. All of my funds together total $858.53, and that gives me a remaining of $420.39. So let's go ahead and highlight what I have left to allocate. And then for my funds, I like to use this deeper blue color to kind of differentiate them. Okay, next on my list is investing. So I do still invest a little bit every month even though I'm paying off debt. Um, I have found this past year and a half now I've been contributing to these different bank or these different investing accounts and they really have grown significantly compared to, to how much I've put in. So I am learning that even if it's five dollars, ten dollars every month it really can make a difference. So I have two different um, kind of like platforms I invest in. First one is Acorns, which is gonna get $12. How this breaks down is I do $5 that automatically goes into the account every single month. There's a $1 service fee, so we're up to $6. And then the Acorns platform can connect to your debit card, which is what I do, and it rounds up all of your um, transactions. So let's say I go to the grocery store, I have my $100 budget, let's say I spend $75.75. Acorns would take that transaction and say, okay, well it's 25 cents to the next dollar, and it would take that 25 cents and then invest it for me. So it's kind of a nice way to round up investing. It really doesn't feel like you're investing much, but that change doesn't go into the Acorns account until it reaches $5. So. Like I said, we have five automatically going in, one dollar for a service fee, and then I like to account for about six dollars for um, a roundup throughout the month. The other one is Betterment, and I'm putting in thirty-nine dollars, so I put in ten dollars to automatically invest for me. And then the other bit of this, the twenty-nine that would be remaining, I'm doing a letters savings challenge. So. Let me show you what that looks like. I got inspiration from the budget mom on some of the things that she is doing this year. She has these different savings challenges you can sign up to do with her. Um, I just kind of liked the idea of this letter savings challenge and kind of made it my own. But the gist of it is you kind of write out the alphabet and you assign each letter a number. So for me, I just went in chronological order. And then you pick a word or um, something to save each month. So for me, I chose to do the shorthand of the month. So like July is J-U-L and August is A-U-G. And then so for August, it's $29 and I got that because I added up A, U, and G from my key up here. And I'm choosing to invest that much. That could be something you're just putting in your emergency fund. It could be something that you're using to save for Christmas. 
I'm choosing to invest it. So the 10 automatic plus the 29 from savings challenge gives me that 39. So this equals $51 and that gives me a remaining of $369.39. So let's highlight those. Investing, I like to highlight in orange. And then this is how much money I have to allocate. So at this point, I've covered all my fixed expenses. I've covered my funds or cash envelopes, whatever you want to think about them as. I've invested a little bit. But my main priority right now is paying off debt. So all of this extra is going to go towards debt. And for me, I have a few different things. So for my Discover card, I'm putting 101.53 here. My American Express, I'm gonna put in the minimum payment, which is 61.69. I guess I should say the 101.53 is gonna pay off the Discover. The Amex 61.69 is the minimum payment. And then what I have left is 206.17 that I'm putting on the Capital One. Now I also have this new one here, which is City. So I did open up a 0% interest for 18 months City card. And I am going to be doing a balance transfer from a little bit of the Capital One and the rest of the American Express. Just because these are higher balances that are going to take me some time to pay off, but they also have a high interest rates. And after kind of doing the math and everything, I really am going to benefit from having 0% interest. So every penny I send to those cards or to that debt, I guess, is going to be used for the principal payment to knocking it down. So I just applied for this card and was approved and all of that. And I don't have the transfers done yet. I put in the request for them. And I also um, am waiting to see kind of how that looks. So I don't have a payment due for City in August, but I wanted to keep it here in case that changes or if I'm incorrect or anything like that so that I can track it in my actual column here when it's time. But that is something that we'll be seeing in the future. My Amex is gonna go away and my city is going to be taking kind of its spot to pay off the balance. So this total here is 369.39, which gives me a remaining of $0, which is exactly what you're looking for if you are a zero-based budgeter. So let's highlight that. Debt I'm doing in yellow how much and then this is how much I have left over which is zero so that means that of the full paycheck that I'm getting every single cent is allocated and has a job to do so that is going to be my August budget after August is done we'll come back and we'll fill out the actual the percentage and all the other worksheets I put together to kind of track my personal finance journey but I hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you are going to be working towards this month and how you're going to get closer to your goals and I'll see you guys in my next one bye